All right, this time we're going to learn how to use X1140 in uh, OpenSSH here and on Linux. So usually when you use OpenSSH, you log into someone's uh, you know computer or your own server or whatever it is, and you access mainly the, the command line options only or the command line programs. Well, what X11 allow you to do is actually access the GUI programs. And so that's what we're going to do, access a GUI programs remotely. And it'll load up on your uh, local computer, even though you're working remotely. It'll look, you know, it'll look like you're working uh, natively. So see how you do this here. Uh, I'm gonna assume you know how to use SSH because if you don't know how to use it, watch my old videos on it. Um, I don't want to explain you how to use it again. Anyways, uh, let's log into our server here. So SSH, and we'll log into my server. And the only thing that you need to do in here is. Um, was I install this program called if you don't have it already so X A U T H here right this is the program you need to install and basically it means X authentication utility right install that sucker um, for X1140 now the next thing you need to do is actually edit the uh, client I'm not sure why they want you to you know edit the client or whatever but um, that's what you gotta do. So you do sudo, we'll use nano for this, etc, ssh, and ssh uh, underscore config here. And I'll type in our password on our server here. And go down to uh, where it says host here, right? Uh, the only thing that you need to edit here is by default they have this little pound sign in front of this. So they have like a little pound sign in front of this. Make sure you get rid of it. So you delete this, delete this. And if this one says uh, no, make sure it says yes. So just you know delete the no and type in yes. And that's about it. This one is optional. This one is, uh, what was that, forward X11 trusted. I'll show you what that is too. And But it's optional, okay, if you want to use that. So I'll show you both here. Anyways, after you uh, do all the changes here, you want to write it out. So to write it out is the bottom here. It'll tell you it's using Control O, right? To write it out. Basically, we're saving it. So Control O, and you hit Enter. And now to exit, it has you hit uh, Control X here. So Control X to exit. Now that one was for the uh, client. Now we have to do it for uh, the daemon. So we do use uh, the da the D here. So that's the only difference here, right? This one is SSH, this one is SSH uh, D here. And then you enter. Now in here, you go to the bottom somewhere here. There you go. And you want to look for uh, these two lines here. It says X1140, uh, yes. X11 display offset 10. Make sure that one doesn't have a pound sign either because sometimes they have a pound sign like this. Make sure it's, uh, what is that? You delete that sucker. And after you're done and everything, you do the same thing. You hit uh, Control O to write it out. So Control O, Enter, and then Control X to exit. Uh, the next thing you need to do is actually restart your SSH daemon. Depending on which computer or you know distro you're using, some some distro they use uh, sys was a System D. I think Debian they use uh, init or sysv whatever. I don't know what the name is, but this is how you do it for Debian here. sudo, um, what is that, services, uh, ssh, and then you do restart. And this one will restart your um, ssh daemon, okay? And that's all you gotta do. Now we're gonna exit out of our server. So we're gonna do exit here. Now we're back to our local machine here, okay? Um, now the next thing, if you want to access it uh, using X, uh, you know, you do, uh, what was that, SSH before, we did like this, but we want to use the dash capital X here, and this one will log in as the, um, yeah, uh, you know, allow us to do X1140, okay, now you logged into here, now the way that you know that this one will allow you to do uh, GUI programs is if you do echo um, display here, right now if it says localhost in here then you're good if it says something else and it doesn't say localhost 
that means you're not going to be able to uh, run GUI program. So make sure to check it. You just do a uh, echo display here, and that's how you know. So if I run um, Leafpad now from my remote computer, it will actually show up on my local computer here that I'm doing the screencast on. Um, and you see here it goes. See, this is my uh, Leafpad program. See here. Right? There you go. Um, if you want to launch some other programs, you can do that too. Let's say, um, well, that one is for, um, what is that? Uh, the one that we just did was this command here, right? However, it's very slow to use this one alone only. So I recommend you use this other one. And I'll explain what that is here um, in a minute. This one here. So that one was for, you know, X11 forwarding. So we do the same commands. Now we're going to do a capital C, a dash capital C. And this one will compress, uh, since for compression. And this one, uh, dash lowercase c, this one is for a cipher. And we're going to use these two ciphers here, the blowfish and the arc4 here. Basically, from my understanding, is that these are the two fastest shit. And when you're using X11 forwarding, by default, the, the default settings is slow. So you want to add these ones in. Uh, the compressions and the ciphers and it'll actually make it fast so if you log in with this right uh, you can still do echo and you see it'll still say you know localhost whatever uh, and you can access your programs I usually use this for Calibre because um, yeah Calibre you know they don't have a web UI that you can edit uh, your tags and everything like that they don't have a command line that you can edit your tags well kind of but not really and that's really annoying. So the only way that you can edit your, your books and your tags or whatever is using the GUI program. And that's the only way, you know, that's why I need to use a, a way to remote into my computer, uh, my server, and access the GUI. And this is what I use for uh, this purpose here. Right, and I can edit stuff from here if I wanted to. I can switch to different ones. Uh, let's say textbooks or something. Not a rename, I mean. So this one's actually from my server, not my computer I'm doing the screencast on. If um, you know I wanted to switch to a different library, I can do that. So that's how you do it here with the GUI programs. Not really that hard. And if you ever want to exit out of this, you hit control C and I'll cancel that program. And let's do exit. Now that one was what was that we did was this one was the normal one this one was with the options if you want to use the trusted um, what was that x11 forwarding uh, normally I, I wouldn't recommend it but I'll just show you what it does here is it's basically the same thing but um, what is that uh, it's the same thing it's just that you don't use the X you do a dash Y for trusted forwarding and the concept of this is that you trust the other computer um, although this one is less security, okay, you can still access your, um, you know, GUI programs from here if you want. And you see you can still do the same stuff. Although this one is less security and if the other computer is somehow infected or something like that and they can do some shady shit from their side and they can actually watch what you're doing. That's what I heard from uh, using trusted one here. Um, but you can use your GUI like you normally do, you know, open leaf pad or you can do... Uh, normal command lines you can do that but uh, just know that when you launch a GUI program it will actually launch it and it will show it on your computer uh, remotely here anyways that is SSH X11 forwarding either trusted or untrusted options and make sure you use these uh, you know compression and, and uh, ciphers when you're doing this otherwise it will be slow as shit and it also depends on your connection too so that's that your mileage may vary okay anywho that's it for this one